Welcome to my monthly portfolio update. As usual, as I hope you'll find this information useful, but disclaimer, please know that this is not investing advice. It's just my portfolio as it stands on Thursday, September 1st, and it can change at any time without previous notification. Following an investment strategy without doing the work yourself is almost guaranteed to result in losses. So please be careful since it's your responsibility to do your own research before investing. Anyways, without out of the way, let's start the video discussing last month activity. After almost three months of no buying or selling anything, I added a few assets to my watch list, which means I made the purchase of $100 or less. First, I bought Romgas, the Romanian monopoly gas producer. Secondly, I bought Norofer, a producer of bio-agricultural products. And third, Simtel, a renewable slash solar energy producer. Let's start with the last one. Simtel is a renewable energy producer play which should be the future of energy. And it's also a company that has a lot of projects in the pipeline and a lot of connections. For example, one of the major investors is one of the biggest companies in Romania. And it's a major player in the Romanian renewable energy ecosystem. If you remember, I already own convertible bonds to restart energy one, but it's actually a bond. And uh, even though it might convert in the third year, it's not really a direct play on renewable energy. And also it's not 100% renewable since Restart Energy One is a company that provides energy and a certain percentage of the energy is renewable, but not all of it, which means that there is still some risk of price dependency with traditional energy. Secondly, Norofair, is a bet on agriculture. Agriculture is a domain I am very interested in since my father has some land in Buzău County, which is one of the 42 Romanian counties where the production this year was very bad due to the drought. However, it seems that the Norofair sunflower seed production is doing actually pretty well due to their focus on bio and proprietary fertilizers. The third and last one, Romgaz, is also a pretty straightforward bet with the gas prices going bonkers. However, I delayed it a bit since, as you might remember, my biggest single bet is Transgaz, which is the Romanian monopoly gas transporter, which is also a bet on the price of gas. But it is not a producer, which usually takes the biggest part of the profits. I also had Gazprom on my watch list, but since he tore a block trading, that opportunity is for now gone. That being said, after I just added this position to the watch list, the Romanian government decided that all energy producers, including Romgaz, should pay what's called a solidarity tax. You gotta love the ex-communist regimes. This basically means they will be taxed above the regular taxing rate to help with the energy crisis. It's still unclear how much that will be, but clearly it's not great news for the company. On other news, I also bought a little bit of Bitcoin at a little uh, above $21,000 and actually got a free Polkadot on Revolut's Learn and Earn program for going through their crypto basic courses. Maybe 15 minutes of my time. Check it out if you haven't done so. It's actually free money. As I mentioned before, I'm not one of those people that swears that cryptocurrencies solve all the world's problems since, to be honest, I don't really see any real world application yet. It's a solution looking for a problem to solve. And also, one thing that bothers me is that the maximalists keep changing their tune. Initially, it was a completely anonymous way of paying that got debunked. Then it was a very good payment method. 
with fees that also proved to be a bit optimistic. Third, it's outside of the reach of governments. I don't know what to say about that since they have the guns, so I wouldn't bet on that either. Fourth, it's an inflation hedge. Mm, it proved not really to be so, etc. However, since I've been studying crypto for a few years now, one thing is clear. A lot of smart people and a lot of money go into the Web3, so probably the value will come at some point. Also, the fact that investment funds and some smaller countries already started investing into it, it's a pretty good long-term sign. Now, before you start screaming at me, I'm not saying that there is no value right now. For example, the Lightning Network, even NFTs to some degree, are valuable, but it doesn't look yet to me, like the game-changing value that was initially promised to all of us. Anyways, moving forward, in terms of new funds this month, I received only a small cash coupon payment from my renewable electric company Restart Energy One bond that I own, but nothing to write home about. Anyways, this is how my portfolio looks on September 1st, 2022. Overall, the current invested portfolio is down 1.4% since last month, which, to be honest, is not that bad in light of the developments this month. The biggest movers this month were, in my opinion, first, the China-Taiwan conflict escalation, which uh, basically, um, when uh, Pelosi went to Taiwan and China actually pushed for military exercises. That was a big risk in my opinion. And secondly, just a few days ago, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell had a very hawkish speech, which actually re reversed a very positive month. However, we're not in this for the short term, so long term it doesn't really matter. If the market goes down, it means that there will be more opportunities to buy great assets as a good price. The pyramid allocation is as follows. You can see a one decrease in value stocks, which basically is due to the uh, hawkish uh, speech of the Fed pre president and then all stocks went down. and. A few other stocks have a slightly higher uh, percentage, but it's just because the overall portfolio was down, they just had a slightly positive roundup in the portfolio. That's it. If you found this information useful so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps getting this content out to more people. Also, if you have any questions or advice, please let me know in the comments. I'll try to respond to all of them if time permits. Now, let's talk about today's bonus topic. How important is luck in investing? As usual, let's see what the second greatest investor of all time after yours truly, of course, Warren Buffett has to say about this, since he is a believer in luck. Buffett noted in a shareholder letter that he won the lottery by being born a white, intelligent, able-bodied male in the United States of America, the richest country in the world, where he could apply his talents. Just a few hundred years ago, those talents would be useless. Same would be true if he was born the same person but in another place, for example in Afghanistan. So we can see that it's not really our classical definition of luck, right? One thing we can note is that luck is subjective. There is one Chinese parable which is called Sei Wang lost his horse that touches on this. It goes something like this. A peasant lived on the border and he raised horses. 
One day he lost one of his best horses. After hearing of the misfortune, the neighbor felt sorry for him and came to comfort him. But the peasant simply asked, how could we know if this is a good thing for me or not? After a while, the lost horse returned with another beautiful wild horse. The neighbor came over again and congratulated the man on his good fortune. He again asked, how could we know if it is a bad thing or not for me? On one day, his son went out for a ride with the new horse and was violently thrown from the horse and broke his leg. The neighbors once again expressed their condolences, but the answer was the same. How could we know if it's a good thing or not for me? Later, the emperor's army arrived at the village to recruit all the able-bodied men to fight in a bloody war. Because of his injury, the son could not go off to war and was spared from certain death. Now, thinking about what luck is, is not really a new trend. People have been pondering this for centuries. Even the stoic Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius had his own specific take on it. Love the hand that fate deals you and play it as it on your own. So, no matter if you perceive something as bad luck or not, complaining about it certainly will not help. Now, let's see how this information translates to investing. First, it's not luck in the traditional sense, but understanding the probabilities. For example, my nuclear electric car sale before Russia's invasion of Ukraine was not a trader move, but rather it made sense for me to deleverage. Secondly, to have luck on your side, you need to have a correct valuation of the asset you are investing in, plus a certain margin of safety. So, even if something bad happens, that you are less likely to lose money. And please check the last video about risk for more details, but you should never, never, never get wiped out. Thirdly, remember that even the great investors are rightly only a bit more than 50% of the time. For example, Peter Lynch said that maybe you're right five or six times out of 10. But if your winners go up 10 or 20 fold, it makes up for the times when you lose 50% or even 100% of your money. Also, the famed investor John Templeton mentioned that based on his experiences, the best analysts are right only maybe two out of three times. But it doesn't really matter how many times you are right or wrong. It matters how much you win when you're right and how much you lose when you're wrong. That is why no one cares, or at least it shouldn't care about theorists, professors, and overall talking heads on TV because they don't have any skin in the game. And if they're wrong, there are really no consequences. One last thing that you need to keep in mind. If something can be solved with money, it's not really a problem, but a cost. The last few months, I broke my phone, my laptop screen cracked and had to be changed, water is leaking in my garage, but that is just the cost of living. I don't see myself as unlucky, but instead I see myself as lucky and as a lucky person, I am able to live the way I want to and doing what I like and excites me and don't worry about the overall unimportant things in life. Next, in conclusion, seeing yourself as lucky is the best predictor of how lucky you are. There are studies showing that people that believe themselves lucky have more opportunities, better relationships, take more risk and overall succeed more than people who see themselves as unlucky and are morose and don't take any chances. I also believe that investing is the most honest profession out there since it doesn't really matter if you're beautiful or ugly, a man or a woman, 
pleasant or unpleasant to be around, etc. If you understand the market factors and make the right decision, the market will reward you no matter what your previous history is, who likes you or who doesn't, etc. As Thomas Jefferson put it, I am a great believer in luck and I find that the harder I work, the more I have of it. And I try to live my life based on that principle, even though investing is not a directly proportional endeavor. If you work harder, it doesn't necessarily mean you will make more money. But if you work less, you will lose money. So it is what it is. I hope you enjoyed this video, you lucky SOBs. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you next month. Bye.